Good afternoon from Yummy B TV. Wishing you all well. Sending loads of love to you as usual. Right. I was coming up this morning, right? I've just got chapter one out the way of my book. First book called Hopelessly Lost. And it was bugging me doing the first chapter. Going over all the emotional stuff that happened when I was a little boy growing up. What happened, mum and dad. Certain things in that childhood. You know what I realise certain times in this life? We don't like who we don't like to go back to how we was and how we felt when we were little kids. You know what I mean? That we wasn't what we thought we was in later life, but we knew what you really was. Yeah, I mean, you was a soft hearted, broken homed, um, traumatized little boy that had to deal with that many of us on the MAB TV have had to deal with and many people in life have had to deal with, uh, to be brutally honest. But in later life, I don't want to be remembered for being a lost little boy that I was way back then because I made some terrible mistakes and it was fueled by trauma, trauma and, and, you know, the stuff that happened to me and that I cried at this bit and I cried. It makes you feel like you're less of a man, but in fact, it's real human reality and that all of us, whatever way, how it manifests from that childhood is how you begin to believe or how you turn out to be the man you are today. And it was hurtful going through it. So I was trying to do a video this morning. I was like, oh God, but I'm not happy. I'm not thinking because what's triggering you from the book you're doing now, finally, Uncle Yami, you know, they bothered you by doing that first chapter with your author, Simon Morrow. And those are the facts. I'm not going to say no more. Someone says, you don't mention a book, Yami. Leave the first book. They've got most of the story, but the detail is absolutely, it's absolutely horrendous and sad and horrific. And it, that's why it's called Hopelessly Lost. My story. You see what I mean? But today, let's go into it now. Let me take my mind off all that. <laughs> it's really hurtful. It pains me. Right? Some of the greatest men from that life that, I used to love being around because I used to always know what to expect from them during my bullshit and bollocks with running about the landings in the category A's, the B's, the C's, etc., etc. during a lifetime of institutionalization, right? Um, the first person I'm going to start with, right, today, I have to, I don't care who's watching, I don't care, it's my story, lay down. Lay down. You can't stop my story. My story is my story. It will always remain the same, no matter what. But the first person I put up today is Gary Nelson. It's Gary Tyson, the one, you know, from South London. Allegedly, they've done this and done all that. All I know is what my experiences were with him inside an institutional setting. How I loved him around me. I could read. We was telepathic, me and Gary Tyson. Mark Ruddock, who was Starsky, Elton John's Cody. Danny Ranks from Northwest London as well, household name. Howard Rose, all of them lot from way back in the Scotland Brothers. All of them, everybody, Chopper, everybody, the big names, Kenny Noy, everybody, tell, tell, all of them will tell you that me and Gary Nelson was tight, tight, tight in those caves. And the reason I liked having him around me, I could think of, you know what? Deep down, right? He was a man he didn't like. Um, bullies and things either he never really liked the vulnerable getting hurt i swear to god i don't know what it was i ain't delved into his childhood too much right but something bothered him about um the underdog with gary nelson right facts man fact 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 the foot that time in one with scrubs you remember when them screws you remember i was I was robbing everybody on the wing with Johnny Gomez at that time and one with Scrubs. Apple was there, Tony Stanley, everybody from, from every man that was there at that time, right? And I was there going with my shit. I ended up down the block. Those days in Scrubs, the screws, right? They ended up getting prison sentences for the brutality that was shown to the inmates down the block in Scrubs. I've got more on this, you know. I'm holding certain little secrets. Uh, to certain prison officers that went the other way on their fellow men and all that. It's not a time for that. But when I was down the block, right, um, I went down there. Gary Nelson was a double-A cat, right, at that time. George Campbell was down there with me. That was one of my robbing partners, sadly, back in the day. George Campbell from West London. It was my boy from way back in the day. So we used to go on little moves, going to do our little stuff in there. Remember the jungle? We know it's not much different to the outside world. He was down there as well. So Gary Nelson was already in 
um, Rochester briefly in the 80s with me and a geezer called Zaki, right? And Zaki introduced, it, introduced me to him in about 86, 87, right? Before I went to Brixton as a little boy, I had a little small period there. Uh, Zaki says to me, and, and Gary was there, that was when he was going through his early stuff as a kid, right? So when we got to, I already knew who he was because I've really spoken to him. And he was talking about that, that meet on the yard in Rochester. So that time there in Scrubs, Gary's there. Roger Vinson has just got nicked with the thing with Kevin Lane. That supposed alleged hit from way back in the day that arguments are going back and forth with now. He comes in about four weeks in. Roger Vinson is on that um, um, cell there. Gary Nelson's on that cell. I'm in an E-man suit, right? I'm in an E-man suit because I tried to take hostages in Brent Magistrate Court, right? And next to me here is Super to the left. I think Super was in an E-man suit. I can't remember. But we was all down the block in 94, 95 in Scrubs. They brought me down because they were saying the screws that you robbed everyone down the block, um, up on the wing, right? So when I was there, they come into the cell. Oh, I can't even face them in the cell, right? About eight of them. You are robbing, yeah? Doing that. I was just looking like that, right? I was just looking again. Okay. Because I knew you lot wanted to do me, right? But I was just looking like that. I was thinking, all right, I ain't going to win this. But Gary Nelson was looking through the spiral. Gary Nelson, straight away, Gary was on it. Because remember, them days in scrubs in that time period there, when you're a double A cat, they can't house you on a normal location up there. That The locals were changing for the local London ones, apart from Belmarsh, of course, at that time. In the early days, Brixton, um, scrubs and whatever, Wandsworth, you could house the cat A's on normal location, but double A cats, you weren't ready for Roger Vincent and Gary Nelson and that, that type of criminal down in your prison at that time, right? Those are the facts, right? So I was, going, yeah. I was looking at him in his eyes, right? Because I was only on a small charge at that time, in 94, 95, before I got that, that other eight and served it all. Um, but I knew that I couldn't really get into it because I knew that they were recommending this and that on, on, at the Crown Court where I took the hostages that time there, right? This was a sec, that was the first time before the other time in Horsley Road. But he went like that, look. So I said to him, all right, I'm looking at him. I said, if I could ever just, because I know I'm not going to win here today. But I was being smart, right? I think Johnny Gomez was to the left, right? And a couple of those from West London were my Cody's from the wing up there. <laughs> but Gary Nelson was watching. So that's when the incident happened with the bread roll. Because after me and Gary started talking through the door, yo, duh, 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 loads of jokes, right? He went like that. Um, that what they opened up the door one day. They said, "Yeah, sorry, get your dinner, Midra, Samson, Yami, whatever they call you, right?" So I said to him, "Yeah." I said, "Where's my bread roll?" He goes, "Nah, nah, we, they're all finished now. You're getting your dinner last and all that." Gary Nelson was looking, right? He's looking through his spy hole and listening to it all. That's the kind of keys he was, mate, right? And I didn't even know. I said, "All right, Gov. All right, cool, cool, cool. If there's any spear, but I'm entitled to my bread roll. Remember that." Remember that? And he's there, over there. And he comes out for his dinner after me in his nightgown with all these diamonds on, dripping with his gold watch and everything. He said, hold on, why is my little brother Yami not getting his bread roll? <sighs> didn't even know he was listening. I swear to hand, I didn't. Didn't know he was listening. I could hear it through my door. This is me. Turn down the radio, I'm listening now. This is Gary Nelson to them. He said, listen, open his door, give him his bread roll, man. They all started surrounding him in his nightgown. I told this story way back in the day. Fact. Right? They all surrounded him. Mr. Slocum, everybody. Let's get this thing to, not, let's get this thing right today. And he went like that, look. He went like that, going. I said to you, why are you giving the nonces upstairs their bread rolls before Yami, my little brother over there? I said to you, open that door over there. And Gary Tyson went like that to them all. They were all surrounding him. He said, what, are you all going to gangbang me? This was 94, 95 when he beat all the cases, right? Right? And he went like that. Look, this is Mr. Stone. Gary, Gary, Gary. We'll make sure he gets his roll. And yeah, give him his bread roll. Right? I see the key. I'll go to the door. I want to burst. I was thinking, F and L. Is that what it is? Right? So I witnessed all that. And you look and said, Gary, 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 we've done a lot of trouble. All right. Just give him his bread roll and give him my one too. 
So I have to say to you, one of the realest men that I ever met, facts, right? I ain't never going to go over that. Whatever's going on outside now, I've done business. I still got to talk the facts, right? So I saw that. And we knew on the football pitch in Whitemore when that kicked off, when, 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 I, when I threw the head butt with the tall fella, the young kid, right? On when I owed him the money and all that, but I was finding a way out. We know how it goes. Gary Nelson and Tony Argent, Warren Slaney, everybody was out in the yard that day. Lambie, Warren Leader, Nelly, Mafia, everybody was there that day, right? Martin Valentine, everybody was there, right? And um, Johnny James and Stevie Gillen and blah, blah, blah. Everybody was there. So you remember, I've got to take account that day. Brian Wright, Ian, Kiernan, there, 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 on the side, and Quincy, my beloved nephew, right? So they, I mean, I said that, I said, yeah, I was waiting to go into the changing room to do my stuff after taking account. And Gary Nelson said, nah, public execution. So I've got to say, one of those men there, I've got to say that Gary Nelson is one of those men that love to be around me. He gets hurt. When you when you, when people are preying on people's vulnerability, I know works funny sometimes. I seem hurt by other things in life. But I ain't gonna bother going to it now. The other man I'm gonna go into in course is my brother Tony Argent and Patrick Tate. Right? Patrick was a comedian. Patrick could read things like my brother Tony Argent and turn up on certain ways and pull his faces and do all that. Right? And turn up, Patrick Tate, and say. Yeah, me. Remember, you used to shut down from the land. Yeah, me get down there, do your stuff, and that. We'll have them all tonight, and all that kind of stuff. Patrick Tate was very much like Tony Argent in certain ways, if you get what I mean. Tony's a bit more harder physically with his hands and that kind of. Remember, um, Pat Tate was a man mountain, but could read anything from a distance. I used to love it. When Tony A was around me, right? I used to get gas, but I never wanted none of them to get into trouble for my bollocks. Pat was into the kind of same bollocks as me, to be honest, at certain times when he can't, when it's not, because it's not every day in a cat a system that your parcel and what you've got planned and where you can run the wing and do your thing. It doesn't happen all the time for you, especially if you're taking things as well, right? So, but Tony, I never took none of that in jail, right? But me and Pat, we, we partnered up later. I told you how I met him in the early days and that. But I'm saying to you that certain days, there's going to be bad days in there where your parcel ain't came and you ain't running the wing and you ain't doing this and you ain't doing that and you ain't in charge of your own and that you can't cover up your shit or whatever. Those are the facts, man. So that that time you have to come out into the jungle as well and show yourself. Patrick was a Patrick Tate was a frontline troop, mate. He ain't backing down from nobody, win, lose or draw. I'll tell you that straight up and down. But a comedian, but Tony Argent, my brother, I put him. I always loved him because he spies on everything. But Pat Tate did as well in my early days. He used to do it for me. He used to do it. What can I do sometimes with those lot? They're all raving lunatics, man. But then I suppose I was as well. And we get round to Warren Slaney, my fourth man, my Huckleberry. I'll be your Huckleberry. And that. You remember that day on the football pitch? Remember that day on the edge of the game? Remember all little different days where he just wanted to turn up? I used to always be the only one sitting downstairs with him on the meal table in Whitemore. And they also laugh at me, always calling you. Yeah, I me, mean, da, 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 da. Warren Slane's a nutter. And no, he ain't. He's not that kind of nutter. I used to like going down. He used to make me laugh and sing in the 80s. Yeah, I me, mean, sing that for me and all that. All right, call Warren. I'll do that for you. But any suggestion towards me, that guy, Warren Slaney, will be straight out of his seat, seat and he'll be on stuff. Yeah, he would. Yeah, he would. Don't matter what you lot all say. You know, deep down, he, he'll, feel, he'll still be thinking, I know Yami is upset with me over a few things, but when it comes to this bit, I will do that bit for him. So he ain't thinking much different from Gary Nelson, Tony Argent and Pat Tate, is he? Because he's still thinking what he's thinking. He's dealing with his own problems doing that life sentence for, for something he never really done in reality. Because I always say that he wasn't the shooter. That's my opinion. You know what I mean? But then, of course, I'll bring the big man from Manchester into the equation. John Gray. You know what I mean? When that thing happened with Murdoch, East London, in the cell, I'll point to the other fella from, what well, no. And then John Gray as a knack, like the rest of them, in turning up at the right time. Because he's watching with his eyes. You look from Manchester know what I'm talking about, man. We know. I'm going to go into Darren Waterhouse soon. I'm going to go into many, many men. Tony Parkinson from Liverpool, he used to always say. Peter Heron, right? E.G., all of them, you said Peter Clark, all of them say, 
Tony Parker, I don't like him, you know. I think he might be Peter and he got a drugs charge. He got about 18 or 20. He said, my favourite nutter is Yammy. Right, on the football pitch and the weights for the thing and all that. One time they all played fight with me. Right, I was in the centre of the wing, right. I got clean for about five months. I went, and all my muscles were back like it is now. I went like that, look. And they was all, yeah, me. What? You look a million dollars, sweet boy, and all that kind of stuff. And I went like that. And they was all holding me, trying to grab me. I went, yeah. And they was all falling all over the place. This is a fucking hell. Peter Heron and um, Tony Parker, listen, we better keep him on the gear. <laughs> I swear down. They always used to say that. They said, oh, my God, it's a different kind of thing, that madman strength with all that energy and all that kind of stuff. If he's clean, I did like all of them down in Liverpool as well. I'm going to go into Andy Shack soon as well with more, more stories on how they're so reliable in big situations and how they read it and how if they love you, they'll come in for you and that kind of stuff. But I don't, with, with the big man from Manchester, I've got to say, he's a strange, strange man. He used to turn up on times. The only person... Right, apart from Colin Gunn and Dave Gunn and whatnot, that Warren Slaney ever I put that he looks up to the Manchester uh, the big man JG bigger than everybody else, and you don't know what I mean because you know Warren doesn't really listen to anyone, but he listened to JG. I think he loved him. That's my personal opinion, and I think that that he saw what he think because remember Warren Slaney's things based on emotional um, disturbances from getting a life sentence possibly for something that he shouldn't be have spent so long away. You know what I mean? So he's going to be reacting the way that he reacts. You know what I mean? But he was a real warlord and he turned up for me everywhere. I'm going to bring the story to see you soon. I know. I'm in, a, I'm in a good mood, but I was sad from this morning. So I'm having a little ramble now. But those, if I ever had to choose anyone to be with me, when I was in the jail when they was all there, I was in dreamland. <laughs> I used to get everything. <laughs> I said, oh, I've got so many little different dimensions in my nap going off. I'm thinking, you're in the game, yummy. <laughs> they were proper, mate. I love them dearly. All of them.